Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at the translation of financial statement using the current rate method. In this session, I'm going to have an illustration. What does that mean? It means in the prior session, I explain what the current rate method is. In this session, I will just go through an example to show you how it works in the real world. Now, this is topic that could be covered in international accounting course, advanced accounting, CPA, as well as the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you, if you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, to please do so. YouTube is where I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. So if you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. Thank you for, for your contribution. Also on my website, I do have additional resources. You could visit my website. And if you'd like to ex access the PowerPoint slides, additional practices for your CPA exam, CMA exam, or your accounting lessons, you can do so for, uh, on my website. If you are, if you're looking for a study pal, I suggest studypal.com.co where they connect you with other people who are studying for the CPA or CFA exam. They are located in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. Now, what is the prerequisite for this session? It's helpful if you watch the temporal method and the current rate method, basically the theory, and also when to use the temporal and when to use the current rate method. So I'm also going to have links for those. So in this session, I'm going to go over an example illustrating this current rate method. So if you have any doubts about what is the current rate method, when is it used, I'll have the link in the description explaining this process. So to illustrate the concept, we're going to assume it's a, it's a, uh, we are working with a multi-US, uh, multi inter, multinational company, and it's based in the US. And what they did is they bought a subsidiary, subsidiary in Italy. So Italian code, the Italian company on December 31st, year zero. On that date, what we did, the, the parent company invested 1,350,000 US dollar in exchange for all the stocks of the subsidiary. So we bought the subsidiary for 1,350. The exchange rate was one euro equal to 135. Simply put, we made an investment of a million euro. Of that investments, 600,000 dollars, 600 euros was immediately inv invested in inventory and the remainder, which is 400,000 dollars was held in cash. So after we put the money, that's what happened. The Italian company began operation on, on January 1st with a stockholder net asset of a million dollars, sorry, million euros, million euros, and not net monetary asset of 400,000, which is cash. And this is what the beginning balance sheet looks like. This is how much we invested, of which immediately we purchased inventory worth of $600,000, and the remaining we kept in cash, 600,000 euros, sorry, euros, we're dealing with euros. So this is the beginning of the year, January 1st, net asset. So we're going to look at this number later on. So the net, the beginning net asset of this company is a million euro. This is January 1st when the company started. Now, throughout the year, what happened? The company operated their business and they purchased property and equipment. They purchased a patent. They made additional purchases of inventory primarily on account. They also negotiated a five-year loan to help purchase the equipment. That's fine. So they have a loan. Uh, they made sales primarily on account and expenses were incurred. Income after taxes uh, were 825,000 euros and dividend was 325 euros declared on December 1st. And this is what their Italian income statement looked like. Okay, so the sales were 8 million, cost of goods sold 6 million, gross profit 2. Then they had selling an administrative of half a million, depreciation expense, amortization expense, interest expense, income before taxes, they have paid income taxes, and this is their net income. Their beginning retained earning is obviously zero. The company did not exist prior. They have uh, net income, net income of 825 euros minus the 325 dividend. So their ending retained earning in euros is half a million. So this is their income statement. Let's take a look at their balance sheet. This is their balance sheet at year end. This is their balance sheet at year end. So they have cash, receivable, inventory. Inventory is reported at cost using FIFO and all the inventory was purchased in December. And we're going to assume it's, it was evenly purchased in December. Property, plant, and equipment. 
accumulated depreciation, and this is their total assets. They have accounts payable, long-term note. Remember, they use the note to buy the equipment. Uh, capital stock of a million and retained earning of 500,000 notice. The end of the year net asset, which is equity, is 1,500,000. Just copy these numbers down. You're going to see them later on when I do a quick reconciliation. So the ending year net asset is 1.5 million. The beginning year net asset is... What, where's the beginning year balance sheet? The beginning year balance sheet net asset is a million. Okay. So that's what happened. You'll see why I'm using these numbers. So to properly translate the euros uh, financial statement into US dollar, we must gather exchange rate between the euros and the US dollar at various dates. So we need to know that the euro was at the beginning of the year dollar thirty five uh, rate when the property property and equipment were acquired 133 rate when the patent was acquired 132 those are not very important for this session but for the next session those rates are important the average for the year is one 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 point three uh, rate when dividend was declared dollar 27 the average for the month of December dollar 26 and the December 31st is dollar 25 okay so those those were the rates now I, I want you to notice and there's a reason for this the euro is steadily declining and you'll you'll see why we set up the example this way to make a point but it doesn't have to be constantly declining we made it we made it declining so we can make a point at the end so those are if you don't have the balance you don't have this data copy this information down so we're going to assume in the euro is the functional currency and we're going to be using the current rate method now you're going to be saying you're going to be saying why the euro is the functional currency why are we using the current rate method look in the description for why when do we use the current rate method okay so here's what's going to happen we're going to first using the current rate method first you translate the income statement pretty straightforward i mean yeah that makes sense you translate the income statement first well you're going to see later that may not be the case under the other method so but let's go ahead and start so which which rate do we use or which rate or rates do we use to translate the income statement well guess what if we're using the current rate method we're going to be using the end of the average dollar 30. let me show you where this where is this coming from this is the average we're going to assume that the uh, that the we're going to assume that the sales and the expenses took place throughout the year therefore we use the average so we're going to take sales times the average rate cost of goods sold times the average rate can give, give us gross profit selling times the average rate depreciation expense times the average rate and you'll see this is going to be a little bit different when we look at the other illustration amortization expense interest expense income before taxes income taxes and this is net income so this is net income notice we used all the average rate to translate the financial statements. Now we'll do the same. We'll, let's go move on to the statement of retained earning. Re beginning retained earning is zero. Net income, net income coming from the from above. We don't have to do anything. Now dividend, dividend times the historical rate. Why 127? Because the rate, the rate was 127 when the dividend was declared. So we have to use that historical. We have to use that historical rate. Okay, then we come up with ending retained earning of 659. Now remember ending retained earnings, it's gonna go to the balance sheet. So let's move to the balance sheet. So before we proceed, just nothing nothing unusual here. We took the income statement, we translate everything on the income statement using the average rate, um, and the dividend using the historical rate. Pretty straightforward. Now on the balance sheet, for the balance sheet, we use the current rate. So cash times the current rate. Current means the December 31st. Let me show you. Current rate is the December 31st uh, rate, which is the la la last day of the year. So we're going to be using this for the assets and the liabilities using the current, current, current rate, current rate. And this is total assets. So total assets is 4 million. So total asset is 4 million, 700, 4 million, 787,000. 500. We'll do the same thing with liabilities. We translate it at current rate, translate the long term debt at current rate. Total liabilities is $2,912,500. This is liabilities, $2,112,500. Now, if we have assets and liabilities, let's do this real quick. Our equity, let's, let me just show you what's, what's going to happen here. 
before we proceed any further. So we have 4,787,500, that's the assets, minus the liabilities of liabilities of 2,912,500, 2,912,000. So let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the calculator. The answer is 1,875,000. So equity should be 1,875,000 before we even show the equity. But this is you need you, you kind of hopefully you can see this. If we have assets translated and we have liabilities translated, now equity should be that much. Now, first thing is we have capital stock, capital stock based on the historical rate, okay? Then we have retained earning. Retained earning is based, based coming from the re statement of retained earning above. So this number is coming from the statement of retur retained earning above. So what we are saying is equity should be 1,875. Let's see what how much equity do we have based on these two figures, the historical rate and the rate um, the statement of retained earning computation. So let's do this. 1,350 plus 659,750. That's going to give us 2,009,750. 2,009,750. Hold on a second. But equity should be 1,875,000 because we translated assets, we translated liabilities. Now here comes what we called the cumulative translation adjustment, or simply the it's a, it's a translation adjustment, but it's a cumulative. It means it stays with us from year to year. What do we have to do now? Well, think about it. If equity should be this figure, let's see. If equity should be, here's what we're saying. We said, based on assets and liabilities, equity should be this figure, right? assets we computed assets current rate liabilities the current rate the equity at the current rate should be that much but it's not it's two million nine thousand and seven seven hundred and fifty guess what we have to make a negative adjustment what does it mean a negative adjustment it means you have to plug a number to reduce to reduce this two million nine thousand seven fifty to one million eight hundred one million eight hundred seventy five thousand well what's the difference between them the difference is 134,750. So notice we have to reduce our equity by 134,750. Simply put, this is a plug. And this is the translation adjustment. And the translation adjustment took place on the balance sheet for the current rate method. This is what we did. We, we, we translated the adjustment on the balance sheet and it's a negative adjustment. Now, if we keep on going, now total equity, 1,800,000 and 750 as we as it's supposed to be right here based on current asset and current liability rate and total equity is equal to total assets so this is equal to this so basically what we had to do we had to plug a figure and this this in this situation we had to reduce our equity sometime we have to increase our equity now let's take a look at some overall observation so no the first thing is the adjustment is negative okay it's a debit balance so basically we debited this account now the question is why why is it a debit balance well the adjustment is a function of is a function of two factors so the translation adjustment whether it's positive or negative is it's a function of the nature of the balance sheet exposure does the company have more assets than liabilities or more liabilities than assets and the direction of change in the exchange rate that the exchange rate appreciated or the exchange rate depreciated well let's go back up here let me ask you this. Let me erase everything here before we proceed. Does this company have an asset exposure or a liability exposure? Does it have more assets than liabilities or more liabilities than assets? Well, we have that, that much assets, that much liabilities. Well, we have, the difference is we have an asset exposure. That's the first thing. Well, if we have an asset exposure, that's one. Okay, we have an asset exposure. Now, the next thing is, what happened to the, what happened to the foreign currency? Remember what I told you, the foreign currency went down the foreign currency went down remember the euros going down because we're the u.s company the euro is going down so what happened if you have a lot of assets and the currency going down think about receivable well if you have receivable you are receiving you're expected to receive the money but you have an asset exposure that's not good for you because now because your foreign currency going down and you're waiting to be paid when you translate 
that money into your home currency, into the US dollar, you're gonna get less because you have an asset exposure and the and the and and the currency went down, depreciated. So what happened here is this: we have uh, we have an asset exposure and the, the the currency depreciated. The direction of the change in the currency, the euro depreciated. Okay. So again, in this illustration, the Italian company has a net asset exposure. Okay. And the euro has depreciated, thus creating a negative translation adjustment. So basically, we have to write down our equity a little bit to make sure it balances. Okay. Now, is there another way to compute this uh, translation adjustment? Sometimes you might be asked to compute the translation adjustments without going through the whole income statement and balance sheet. So basically, the translation adjustment can be derived, can be obtained as a balance in figures that bring the balance sheet back into balance. The translation adjustment also can be computed by considering the impact of exchange rates changes on the beginning, balance, and subsequent changes in net asset position. So simply put what we're saying, if you can study your net asset position, the beginning net asset position, and the ending net asset position, and you could explain the difference, you can find this plug. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see how we do that. The net asset, when we started the year, remember we had 1 million of euros, and I told you, copy this number down. This is what we're going to be using it. We have 1 million of euros. US dollar, 1,350,000. The changes in net asset, we have net income of euros of 825. US dollar translated at 1,072,500 uh, 1, at the average rate, 1.3. We had dividend, which was translated at historical rate, 1.25. Okay. Now we have net asset balance, 1231 year one, 1 million, 1.5 million, but US is 2 million, uh, 2 million, 9,750. Now, if the net asset is 1 million 50, if the net asset 1 million 50, if we use the current rate, what do we get? Well, if we use the current rate, here's what's going to happen. If we use the current rate, Okay, which is if we're using the current method, the the ending equity should be one million eight hundred and seventy-five. Do you remember this number? This is the number that we should have, and this is the number that we came up with. And what we needed to do, we need to write down this number down. We need to brought this number down by one thirty-four seven fifty. One thirty-four seven fifty. So rather than going through the whole income statement and balance sheet. Well, if, there, if you are giving the income statement, if you are giving net income, if you are giving dividend, then you can basically kind of reconcile or confirm all this is shortcut, whatever you want to call it. But I know some professors, they do require it. I don't require it in my classes, but here's the explanation for it. If you want to back, back into your uh, translation adjustment, translation adjustment. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, by all means, please email me. In the next session, we would look at the temporal method. Um, if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, for different courses, you're going to see more resources. Consider subscribing. It's an investment in your career. Good luck and study hard for your CPA.